Hey everyone. Now in the video I did last week on digital radio, I also did a web page for it and I put the link to that in the description. And since these videos get published at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays, I, um, I noticed on my network monitoring here that just after 4 p.m. some traffic was hitting the, uh, the web server. So I see that straight away there was more traffic there so someone must have clicked some links. What I also had running though was a packet capture on the web server. So I had TCP dump running before I published that video just to see the actual traffic. So here's some of it here and most of it is of course port 443 which is HTTPS. So that stuff's encrypted. But if you know your OSI model you'd know that um, once it gets further up the stack, the network stack, and gets to the application which is the web server, it won't be encrypted anymore. So if I look at the actual web server logs, you can see more of what went on. So here's a bit of the logs um, and I just grepped for 404 to see some errors and you can see whatever the hell Jenkins is, oh, manager, just people trying crap probably. But anyway, logs and packet captures tell you everything you need to know and I saw some interesting stuff. Um, I was going to make a video on it but I don't think I'll bother. It was just some stuff but it's, uh, it's interesting to look at and you won't know what's going on unless you look. But anyway, today I just wanted to show you a couple of things on Wireshark um, that may help you out when you're doing um, packet analysis. So here I've got a packet capture from my DHCP server that I left running for a few days. Okay, some random stuff here and whatnot. So if you just click on one of these, um, I don't know, that one there, I might be interested in looking at the host name. So if I go down here, you know we've got layer 2 stuff, layer 3 stuff, layer 4 which is UDP for this, which is the capture filter I used by the way. And um, down here we've got the actual protocol itself. And somewhere down here you'll see the host name. And okay, that's HS110. But if I want to know what's in another one, I have to click it and go down here, that's the gem, go to another one, and oh, look I've got to mess around and find it, there it is there. Go to number one, just find, find where it is, somewhere down here. The thing is, you know, I have to sort of look and, and find it, and sort of focus my eyes and go, where is it? And if I just click some more, you see, you know, I have to go down here and sort of look where it is. Okay, here's one here, the back room. So to make that easy, what you can do, instead of these standard columns here, you've got source destination, the protocol, the length, and some info. Well, you can customize this and have your own columns. And let's say I'm looking today at DHCP and host names. I can just right click that. I mean, if you click it normally, it tells you what the field is. It's bootp.option.hostname. But if I right click that and apply it as a column, what you'll see, just adjust that a bit, you'll see that that now comes up as a column itself. And it's, on, it's a lot easier to just see what's um, the field that I'm looking for is presented up here. So let's say I want to look at, I don't know, the piano. This time I want to look just at that host piano. So here it is, host name piano. If I apply that as a filter and select it for what I've just selected, that will show me that field name, as I just said before, and only if its value is piano. So now, obviously this column all, it all says piano. Let's, um, what I, one thing I noticed here is I've got two different uh, transaction IDs repeating for the piano. I thought, okay, what's going on there? Now, does anyone know why that is? It should be pretty obvious. Um, to me, it means there's two DHCP clients running on that, that host. So one client is asking for an address and then another one's doing the same thing. Okay, getting the same address because the server sees it the same and says, okay, that's your address, here you go. But there's two running, that's why I got that. Uh, two different transaction IDs there. And if I have a look on that host, the piano there, and show the processes, all of them there, and just show the uh, the ones that say DH client, which is the DHCP client name, I can see there's two. There's the one there with all its uh, parameters that started when the thing started, and there's also that one that I would have just run manually for whatever I was doing at the time. So that explains that. But if I go back to this, I can sort this out by the info. Let's say I click that field there, it sorts it by that field. So what I can see is all the ones that are similar go first and then there's the second bunch there. And okay, that sort of makes sense. Now let's say I want to see how far apart they are. Now over in this column over here we've got the time. This is the time since the packet capture started, so how many seconds. You can change that to be local time but I like to keep that as, as the time since it started. 
But down here, um, in this first section here, you've got a few options we can use. And one of those is the time delta from the previous displayed frame. Now, display means whatever's displayed up here, and it's dependent on the display filter. So this tells me that it's been 217 seconds since the previous displayed frame. And if I go to some others, it's, it's whatever it is. But if I just clear all these filters here, get rid of this, and let's say I look at, I don't know, TWC, okay? Now I just want to filter by that. And this time I'll filter by uh, DHCP requests, so I only want requests, so I'll right click that and add it as a filter. And there it is. They're still all there though, because I haven't specified anything more than just saying requests, so they're all requests, but I just want this one, so I'm going to pick its MAC address. So the MAC address for that is, uh, where are we, that one there. So I'll just right click that. I don't want to apply this as a filter selected because that'll just overwrite that one. I still want that and this. So what I do is apply as a filter, dot, 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 and selected. That dot, dot, dot just means what I've already got up here. So it's what I've already got up there and what I just selected. So now I see just the MAC address for that. And you can see it's doing, um, transactions all the time sort of thing. So what's the, the time between these uh, packets here? Now if I look at the time delta of previously displayed field, it's 300 seconds and it's going to be 300 seconds for most of them there. But what I can do is apply that as a column and it will be, when I get it sorted out, yeah, why shark's a bit great here. If you get this sort of issue, just, just double click the uh, divider line there. Bring that into line there. So you can see it's about 300 seconds for, for all of them. Now that makes sense because, because my DHCP server lease time is 10 minutes. So halfway through your DHCP lease time, your clients are going to do another DHCP request. So that's why that's 300 seconds, which is five minutes. So that's as expected. Now let's say there was an issue with whatever you were looking at, it might not necessarily be DHCP, but let's say you weren't getting a response from something. What you do is filter out what you're looking for, and then you can, you can click by this um, column as well now. And if one of them was like, you know, 2000 or something, then it would show up in order. So see all the times are in order here now. So that makes it easier to find. So I'll just put it back in order by clicking the packet number. Now there's another thing you can do here too. Let's just go back to just the uh, MAC address for this device here. So I've got rid of the request filter. Now you can see requests and acknowledgements. Let's say I want to make some sort of note about this packet. Let's say I want to just say, this is when I started looking or this is when the event happened. Okay. You know, someone's given you some, some packet captures to analyze. You can just go to the packet here and put a comment on. You can go, this is when the issue happened. Okay. And down here, you've got a comment. That's just obviously not part of the packet capture. It's just your comment you've put on. What you can do is make comments a column as well. So apply that as a column. And uh, there you go. This is when the issue happened. And down here, you could say something like uh, packet comment. This is when it came good again or whatever. Okay. And it's an easy way to point out issues that you've found. Like you could say, whatever it is you're looking at, doesn't really matter. You get the point. And then packets of interest, you can just sort the field by columns and they'll be all together. So you'll be able to do that. So that's just a couple of tips on making the life of Wireshark easier. And it's especially that last one there with the packet comments is especially useful when someone's given you um, some packet captures to analyze and, and you found something on there and you want to put it back to them. Um, it's easier than writing an email below saying packet number whop de whop is when this happened. Just put it right there and it's on the screen in front of them as they see the packet capture. So that's a good way to present that because you can make a column from the, uh, the packet comments. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. I just wanted to make a quick video this week. I um, didn't want to delve too, too deeply into anything. Um, my future videos may be on a different platform. I don't know if it's going to be Rumble or Odyssey or, or something, but um, if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Uh, for now, I'll still make them, maybe. We'll see. But anyway, until I see you again, take it easy.